And this is how an NLP master packs to go to Costa Rica <laughs> when he should be at the airport right now. Amen. <laughs> See? Teamwork makes the dream work. Boom! Chocolat. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Borat. It says adventure. Dude, you're gonna have a good time over there. <laughs> it's in Times New Roman fun. How do you not read it? <laughs> when you were across the room, I thought, I thought it was in another language. She's referring to this. I was gonna say taco, but it's actually a tattoo. It says adventure. <laughs> Dude, that is not a taco. That is. It's morning time, and I'm making a 10 banana smoothie. Had a good dream, weird dreams. That's at some weird rock concert or something, and now I'm putting some uh, juice in here. Today's gonna be a good day. Juice, 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 juice. Good no wonder. So I talked to my mom and my uh, my dad is okay. Uh, it turns out he had a mild stroke, which is kind of scary. Um, he had a similar thing a couple years ago um, when he, I think it was like a mini heart attack and then like something went to his brain and he had a stroke and he couldn't speak very well. It's just, I don't, I don't know if you guys have <laughs> ever had that experience of having like a parent kind of get sick and, and it's, it's I've, I've, he, he's been a, a diabetic since he was five. He's type one diabetic, and um, I've seen him with a very low blood sugar and how he just freaks out and just becomes another person and gets very violent and out of it and spacey and can't really talk and he slurs his words and it's just, uh, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to deal with, you know. It's like, how do you deal with something like that? So if you guys have had parents and who've had heart attacks or strokes or you know you're, you're, you've, you've been in that situation, you know, let me know how you handle it or or, or uh, your experience with that in the, the comments below. So uh, no, I'm just I'm just super driven and motivated right now. Like I don't know my <laughs> my energy is not as as um, high and crazy as it was yesterday. Yesterday was intense. Like yesterday. I don't know, man, like, a light bulb switched on in me. I had this, this awakening, I had this, like, breakthrough, like, clarity on myself and my business and my life and how everything just kind of blends together. Um, my friend Amir, who I'm living with, he just kind of went through this game plan for all of us, and, like, we were sitting there at, like, 2 in the morning, and I was eating rice, and I was, like, just pumped up and, like, dancing out of my chair, and I just, like, had so much energy, and it was, like, paying full attention he was writing on the whiteboard and we were planning out this this idea that we're going to put into place this top secret idea uh leading up to the event that we're putting on in houston um may 30th to june 1st and um i ended up just getting really juiced up and i had some work that i that i was working on i was working on some stuff for myself and also i had to finish up some work for a client of his uh, in the real estate business, doing some internet uh, stuff and uploading and all that. So I was up until six in the morning, just getting stuff done because I was just super focused. And then I woke up at like 10 o'clock and then Amir and Summer had to take off to the airport because they're, they've gone to Costa Rica for two weeks. So uh, we're kind of running the operation while they're gone. And uh, it's good, man. And uh, I'm just gonna keep on going and keep on getting stuff done and uh, hopefully you guys are getting something from this because I know it's, it's, a, it's a learning experience for me. Uh, I haven't been the best with uh, being focused and being on task and completing things and um, I've always been the, the big dreamer and the visionary but one thing that actually we had a late night session the other night, um, we were talking about the Walt Disney thought process. and. One of the suggestions Amir had for me is to study Walt Disney's thinking because some of you know that I have huge aspirations and I do want to open up a leadership and self-development theme park one of these days, which is going to trump Disney World. It's going to be, it's called, it's called Leaderland and it's, it's going to be um, just, a, just, it's just an amazing theme park for everyone. I'm not going to get too much into that. You might steal my idea. Don't do that. <laughs> um, 
So the Walt Disney thought process, this is what he would do. He, he would, um, he would kind of like step into the role of the dreamer and think huge, okay, like what's the best possible outcome? Like what is the craziest, wildest, you know, uh, idea and vision for this ride? He would step out of that role and step into the critic. Okay, what could go wrong? Uh, what's the worst that could happen? Uh, how can this completely fail? And he would step out of that role and go into the middle as the realist, and he would merge the two together. Because, okay, like, okay, I see that, and I see that, and so he was just putting them together in, the, in a realistic frame in the middle there. And, and you know what? That's what I need to do. I just need to, to step into each of those three roles and to think about it from those three perspectives so I can get a 360 degree view of what I'm trying to accomplish and create in my life. So for a lot of you who are dreamers like me and have like huge ideas, that might be helpful for you to actually look at it in a different light and to execute your ideas more effectively rather than uh, having this huge dream and vision and not having being properly equipped to actually carry it out and have it become a reality so I found this cool abandoned car wash dude I'm in a pawn shop I've never been in a pawn shop before there's all these TVs it's not what I expected this is cool Go to pick up some packages that were sent to me. Can't wait until this pool gets open, man. I could use a nice dip in the pool or an ocean. Why doesn't Texas have oceans? Or maybe they do. I don't know anything about Texas. Um, I'd like to dip in the ocean. That's why when I go back to New York uh, for a week, the 4th to the 9th in June, I will be going to Coney Island because it's one of my favorite places in the world and I get to go. I'm, I'm a silhouette. I get to go in the ocean and go on the rides. I love Coney Island. Can't wait for that. Uh, let me know in the comments below if there's any beaches or oceans in Houston, Texas or nearby. So I made another uh, 10 banana smoothie. So this time I switched it up. 10 bananas with some prune juice that I got yesterday, which is very good. And uh, some green powder. I always like to uh, change it up sometimes. Oh, that's good, man. I had uh, prune juice the other day for the first time and it's, uh, it's quite delicious. All right. I'm um, going to walk over to the uh, water place now. There's the giant cactus that gives you water for 25 cents per gallon. So I um, got one of these big wine jugs. And this is great, especially if you're in a humid, hot climate like Texas, where I am right now. It's like good to drink a lot of water. Bought one of those things. I uh, got all my roommates to drink all the wine. I had some, even though I don't drink a lot of wine. And then I went to the dollar store today and I bought one of these jug -a juggers and put the rest of the wine in there. Uh, so they can uh, feel free to get drunk off of that, which is awesome. And uh, I kept the bottle for myself, which is awesome. I might even write the word love on there because when you write the word love, it infuses that energy into the water. It's a scientific study by Dr. Emoto in Japan um, that the molecules change depending on if you write like negative words or positive words. Like I've ever wrote hate on here, it'd be all like under a microscope, it would be all like muddy and brown and gushy, gooky, whatever, but if you wrote the, the word love on here and looked at the water molecules under a microscope, it would be like beautiful and crystalline like a snowflake. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm at a giant cactus, I'm at a giant cactus that gives me water, water, water. <laughs> so it's like a giant cactus that gives you purified water and it says there's a micron filter with activated carbon filter, ultraviolet light, cleaned, sanitized daily, quality control, shut down, purified water. 12 step process, filter, 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 ion exchange. I don't know what that means, but it sounds good. And it's only 25 cents. Ah, crazy. Dude, I don't see this in New York or Philly or anywhere else other than Texas. Oh my goodness. Dude, that was, wow! Wow, that was awesome. So that's like a gallon. 
Let's see. Let's see if I can. Well, obviously, duh, I can drink a gallon of water a day. Maybe I can drink two gallons. You know, there's this woman who drinks like six gallons of water every day because she's addicted to water. And she's still kind of fat. I thought water <laughs> was supposed to cleanse your body of all the toxins. I don't know, man. Maybe she's just eating more toxins than she's... No, that doesn't make sense. Six gallons of water a day. It's... Look her up. She's on the YouTube. I think she's from England. Um, I'd like to interview her about that. Okay, later. If you know her, give me her number. Later. Yo, I just stepped on a hot sauce packet from Taco Bell and I didn't even realize it. And <laughs> I heard a pop and I felt something spray on my leg. It's right here. <laughs> God, I've been, I've been hot sauced. <laughs> it was a booby trap. Some like crazy cannibals are like lurking in the bushes, expecting me to, to step on this hot sauce packet to flavor my tender skin, and they're gonna jump out and stab me in the heart and eat me, especially my leg that's been marinated in hot sauce. I hope that doesn't happen. So today's task is to fit this bike into that car. We made it fit! <laughs> we had to take off the tire. That's alright, I have to replace the tire anyway. Found our destination! So this is Summer's tire. I don't know if like a badger ate it or like if she got into like a crazy wreck. <laughs> it looks like it's like a bear took a junk out of it. I don't know. So we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're helping her fix her tire. So we're, we're getting a good deal. This dude's helping us out. Thanks, Clarence. Look how happy this guy is. <laughs> Like a kid in a candy store. Hello, Gavna. Hello. Are you from London? You like it was so Summer gave us 40 bucks to get her tire fixed. At first she was like, I don't know how much it'll cost. Like, here, I'll, uh, maybe I'll give you 60 bucks. I'm like, no, 40 should do. And we saw this tire, and it was like a really nice one. It was a Michelin. This one, here. And it turns out it was on sale for 21 bucks. So everything in total was like $40.02. So we were two cents over budget. It's insane. Walmart is crazy. It's like a supermarket, but it's a Walmart. It's like a full, look at this. It's like freezer sections. And <laughs> we're in Texas, so look at all that meat. <laughs> uh, it's like a supermarket, but it's a Walmart. Weird. Where's the gun section? Uh, they probably have one. <laughs>